My estranged sister comes into my life and wants my family to watch her baby. And when we say no, we find out that she secretly stole our cats, took them to a shelter, and filled out all the paperwork to have them put down. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. To start the story, you need some background. My father had a best friend who he had known for years. His friend is sterile. He asked dad for a donation and dad agrees under the circumstance that he will not be involved because he was already with my mom and had Lily, my older half sister from my mom's first marriage and the only sister whom I was raised with. His friend agrees so my dad's genetic donation happens. Petunia is born and my dad's friend dies when she is only four months old. Petunia's mother remarries a very rich man in all is well in the world. Fast forward 16 years and Petunia finds dad dad on Facebook and demands to see him. He's careful, tries to get a hold of her mother, no dice, but he tells her that if she wants to meet then her mother must approve it and sets up a place to meet. Well, Petunia shows up with a bunch of bags and my dad watches a car drive off. Petunia has lied and her parents have dumped her on us for the summer. She spends the entire summer making mother, dad, me, and my sister, Lily, miserable because we can't afford things that she's used to. Any attempt to call mother is ignored because they're, quote, on vacation in Europe. Dad doesn't want to call the police because he feels bad for Petunia. Petunia leaves and we think she'll stay away. Nope. She shows up three years later with a baby and tries to get my sister Lily to babysit because you're the eldest. You're old enough to have kids of your own, so this will be like practice for you. Lily declines. She doesn't actually like children and says something along the lines of, the only babies I will ever care for is them, meaning her cats. Petunia refuses to accept this and keeps hounding us all to babysit because family. Lily flat out tells her, you're not my family. You're just my stepfather's daughter. You can't pull that card on me. I said no and I mean it. We think that's the end of it because by now no one is wanting to babysit which leads to angry rants on Facebook about how we're ruining her life and keeping her from enjoying her youth because we're so selfish. Again, this is ignored but not for long. Two days ago, Petunia showed up at the house claiming she wanted to talk to dad. He was busy and no one else was home so we told her to wait in the living room because he would only be gone a few minutes. Apparently, this was long enough for Petunia to grab my sister's cat and leave. My dad said that he came back and was shocked that she was gone, but shrugged it off. My mom and sister came home and an hour later, when my dad mentioned the visit, they all thought it was weird. An hour later, I came home and my sister is frantically looking for her cats. It's assumed they got out when Petunia came over. She let them out and were looking around the trees and calling for the fur balls. My sister is having a full on panic attack and my dad ends up calling an ambulance because she passed out. My sister has bad anxiety. My sister ends up in the hospital and my mom stays with her and my dad keeps looking for the cats. I'm keeping in contact with my mom via text and she lets me know that my sister is being admitted for observation. My dad and I are frantic because we know that if we don't find the cats or worse, find them dead, my sister may go downhill. We were lucky enough though, as not too long after we had just about given up hope, we get a call from my older brother. It turns out that Petunia had taken the cats to the Humane Society, the same one he worked at and was claiming the cats needed to be put down immediately. He didn't see Petunia turn them in because he was in the back, but he recognized the fuzzballs and was able to get my dad to come down and claim ownership of the cats. Now my dad is working on filing a lawsuit and a police case for the stolen property and the harm that this did to my sister. Sitting on the cake was when my dad texted Petunia to ask why she did it. Her claim was because now Lily can babysit without worrying about those horrible creatures and then she added a smiley face at the end someone asked was there ever anything about why Petunia's mom and stepfather abandoned her at the OP's house in the first place was that all so that they could take some stupid vacation the answer from the OP was essentially they dropped her off with the intention of just leaving her there for the summer a month later there was an update I will be updating as more happens but seeing as so many people were asking for an update I figured I've left you all in limbo.
limbo long enough to have something worth posting. Number one, my sister is back home. Yay. The doctors had to run a ton of tests, including stress tests, blood tests, ECGs, etc., and told my parents that the stress caused something called broken heart syndrome, which my sister is on medication for now while in the hospital. And she will be monitored every so often to make sure it doesn't happen again. My dad asked if this could have killed her, and the doctor basically said that yes, it was very close to a heart attack, which is scary in and of itself. Number two, Petunia has been arrested. My dad filed a report stating everything that she had done, and while this is super satisfying, it gets better. They put out a warrant for her arrest because of the theft, but also because she was apparently on probation for a DUI. And guess what, people? She had a ticket in Italy in her bag, leading the officers to safely assume that she was trying to flee the country, which is also against her probation. Not only that, but my brother was able to go back to the Humane Society and get the login sheet for the day she turned in the cats. She signed my sister's name. So now we're looking at a possible case of fraud, assuming it's not actually proven yet. Number three, a restraining order has been put into the works with every member of my immediate family being placed on it so that she cannot contact any of us in the near future. Number four, her mother and stepfather are threatening to sue us for harassment since apparently it's our fault she's now being held in custody. Number five, all forms of social media that me and or my siblings slash parents use have been locked down or downright deleted because we don't actually trust her or her parents not to try and sneak in using fake accounts. So one year into the future, there is an update. I won't give details because the case is ongoing, but Petunia is facing additional charges as are her parents. Number one, they've lost custody custody of the baby who has been taken by the father and his parents. Number two, we've had to move because of the harassment and attacks from Petunia's flying monkeys. Number three, my sister is currently on several medications for anxiety, depression, and PTSD from all of this, and she is terrified to leave the house now. She's in therapy and seems to be doing better, but she's struggling. I know it's not the happy ending everyone was wishing for, but it is what it is. We're just taking this a day at a time. So, am I the jerk? So, before the whole cat thing happened, I actually did feel for for Petunia because she didn't ask to be born into this situation where her biological father was giving his genetic donation to his best friend so that she could be the daughter of his best friend, but then he dies. So she didn't even get to even know him. I think that position would be difficult for anyone to be in in general. And I think that she's probably being motivated by trying to reconnect with her biological family, at least the dad, because he's directly related to her, but she's kind of just bullying her way into the situation instead of trying to go about it more gently. The way the OP perceives it is that when she came over for that first summer, she made everyone miserable because Petunia was pointing out all the things that she's used to. But maybe Petunia sees that as she was trying to relate her experiences and find some way to bond over anything when they don't really have anything in common. And then three years later, when she comes back with the baby, it sounds like she just wants to have the baby be the connection between her and that side of the family, which probably made perfect sense in her mind because she's thinking this is such an enormous milestone in my life, of course my biological half of my family will want to share this with me. But the way that it came off is like she's just trying to dump her kid with them in the same way that she was dumped with them three years prior. Obviously what throws the dad for a loop is that the agreement he had with his friend was that he not be involved because he was already with the mom and had Lily in the picture. And the friend agreed to that, but he couldn't keep up with that agreement because he died. So if the story was just that, I would honestly feel a little bad for Petunia because she didn't make any of those decisions. She didn't do any of that. She was just trying her best to do what she knew how to do. But all of that changed when she purposely misunderstood what Lily said about the only babies I will ever care for is them, meaning the cats, and then trying to solve the problem by getting her cats put down. That is a deranged solution, if you can even call it that. And then she just vanishes and doesn't say anything to anyone until they are the ones that find out via the Humane Society Center. So maybe that was her very dark way of retaliation against this whole situation that she's had to go through her whole life that nobody can relate to. But come on, you don't have to take it out on the cats. So if this was you in this situation and somebody did this to your cats, how would you handle everything? Let me know down below. Am I the jerk for not giving my sports cards back to my dad after I found out how much they're worth? I'm a 19 year old male and I was gifted my dad's sports card collection for my 18th birthday. He had boxes of them from when I was growing up. I started looking into how you could get them graded. I finally shipped the best best ones out a few months ago and just got them back last week. I was happy to see how highly some of them were graded. I researched what these cards would go for and my jaw dropped.
stopped. This money would help me pay for college and I would still have a decent amount left over. I was visiting my parents and my dad mentioned something about those cards. I made the mistake of saying how much some of these cards were worth. He didn't have much of a reaction that night. The next day, I got a long text from my dad saying that he gave it some thought and that he wanted his cards back. The money would help him and my mom pay for their dream vacation. I thought it was a joke, but he was serious. I told him sorry, but they were a gift and I intended on using this money for college. Since then, I've been getting hurtful texts from my parents saying how selfish I am and how I'm a jerk for wanting to sell these cards because they were a gift, even though they would do the same thing if I gave them back. I planned on getting my dad a cool gift for his birthday with some of my money, but I'm starting to think that he doesn't deserve anything at all. Before you decide jerk or not a jerk, there is an update. First of all, thanks to the people saying that I'm not the jerk. There were some people saying that everyone was a jerk and a few people said that I specifically was the jerk sprinkled in, but thanks for the input. I didn't want to lose my relationship with my parents over this, so I decided to compromise. My idea was to keep the cards and handle the sales myself. However, I would communicate each sale with my parents and come up with a fair split to pay for college and their vacation. I told my parents that we could meet up on Monday and discuss this whole situation. Unfortunately, they continued to harass me over the days leading up to our talk. Apparently, having to work on Mother's Day was just an excuse by me to avoid talking to them about the cards. By the time we met, I was pretty tired of their nonsense. I could be the jerk for this, but I decided to test them. I lied and told them they could have the cards if they paid me back the cost of me getting them graded. When I told them the price of how much it cost to get them graded, they didn't believe me. I was accused of lying to get more money out of this. I realized it wasn't worth proving it. They wanted everything and there was no compromise to be made. I told them not to contact me again and that I'd only be around to see my brother and to go to the other family events. So that's how it went. I'm glad they care more about money than me. I've been trying to keep it together, but it's been hard. Thankfully, my girlfriend has been around to comfort me. She's the best. Maybe I'll use some of that extra money on a vacation for us. I haven't heard anything from other family yet, so I don't know how this is all going to play out. I guess all I can do now is work on getting those cards sold and hope for the best. My relationship with my parents is basically over for now, but I still have the cards. So am I the jerk for not giving back the sports cards my dad gave me? These cards must be worth a lot of money if a family would be willing to to tear themselves apart like this. I'm much more familiar with the prices of Magic the Gathering cards and Pokemon cards, but I know there are sports cards that are crazy expensive. Just looking at some of the top lists, apparently a 2009 Steph Curry National Treasures rookie card sold for $5.9 million. A LeBron James 2003 to 2004 Upper Deck Exquisite Collection number 8 sold for $5.2 million. And then of course, probably one of the most famous ones, the 1952 Tops Mickey Mantle that also sold for $5.2 million. I don't know enough about basketball cards to know why those first two were so expensive. Maybe they're one of ones or maybe it was for some sort of auction for charity or something, but apparently that's what they sold for. But anyway, even if the cards were worth thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever it was, this is a pretty bleak situation because a lot of times people think that power and money turn people evil or they turn them into something that's ugly, but most of the time, power and or money just reveals whatever was there naturally. It's like, imagine Imagine you had all the money you ever wanted in the world. You're not really going to be worried as much about offending this person and offending that person because you know that you have enough money to survive no matter what happens. And that's why you see a lot of cruelty expressed in people that are hyper, hyper wealthy sometimes or people that just have power in general. Sometimes it's because there's no longer an incentive to hide whatever their true personality is that lies beneath. That might sound a little extreme for a situation like this, but I mean, it's your family. The dad would be willing to sever his ties with his own son because he wants to go on a luxury vacation. To me, that's just sad. It's superficial versus, hey, you just helped your son cover his entire college expense and then some. And about the whole concept of giving someone a gift and then they sell it. Somebody did that to me once about something that wasn't very valuable. And I know that it shouldn't matter, but it does bug you a little, especially when you could have just sold it yourself. But in this case, that's exactly what the dad was going to do. He was just going to sell it himself. Doesn't mean that they don't have the right to sell it because you have gifted it to them, but I can see 
see why the dad would be annoyed about him selling it, even if he himself was going to sell it all the same. So if you were in a situation where your parents gave you something that was worth $750,000, for example, and then they wanted it all back, all or nothing, what would you do? Let me know down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. How do I deal with my roommate? She stole my asthma inhaler because she was angry at me and I needed it. I'm a 20 year old female and I have asthma and lately it has been flaring up. My roommate is 25 and we are both in college. We got into a fight on Saturday. I meal prep because I'm pretty busy with work and school. I go to school full time and I work five days a week. It saves me money and time. I also started eating healthier and I haven't been skipping meals since I started meal prepping. A few days ago, I noticed that some of my meals were missing. I asked my roommate about it and she told me that her and her boyfriend ate a few of my meals for my meal prep. I was upset and I told her that she can't just take my food like that, especially without asking. She told me that I'm making a big deal out of nothing, but that she wouldn't do it again. On Saturday, I noticed that another one of my meals were missing. I confronted my roommate about it and she told me that she ate another one of my meals. I got upset again. I told her that she needs to stop taking my food and that the next time she does it, I'm going to make her pay me back for all the food she took. She started yelling at me. She called me an overreacting B and then she left. It was a really long day. I went to bed very early that day because I was exhausted. I had a six hour shift at work and I spent the rest of that day studying for finals. I usually leave my inhaler on my nightstand so that I can easily access it. I woke up in the middle of the night because my asthma was flaring up. I was coughing and I was having breathing problems. I needed my inhaler, but it wasn't on my nightstand when I looked. I thought that was odd because I remember leaving it on my nightstand. I searched my room for it, but I couldn't find it. I thought that maybe I had misplaced it. It was around one o'clock in the morning and I really, really needed the inhaler. Nowhere was open at that time for me to get one. I drank some black coffee, but that didn't help much. I ended up calling my friend that lives in the same building as me. She also has asthma and she uses the same inhaler as mine. She had an extra inhaler and she brought it to me. I felt bad for waking her up, but I really needed an inhaler. In the morning, my roommate asked me why I was making so much noise last night. I told her that I needed my inhaler, but I couldn't find it. So I had to call a friend to bring one for me. She had this really guilty look on her face. Then she confessed to stealing my inhaler. She told me that she was still really mad at me because I have so much food and I wouldn't let her eat any of it. So she came into my room while I was sleeping. She said that she wanted to get back at me. She said that she planned on taking something valuable that I would miss. Then she just saw my inhaler on my nightstand and she decided to take it. She apologized. She told me that it was an impulsive decision and that she wasn't thinking straight. Apparently the anger caused her to do it. Then she gave me back my inhaler. I was furious. I asked her if she was crazy. Who in their right mind would take someone's asthma inhaler because they're angry with them? I told her that if it was worse, I could have died. She told me to relax. And again, she told me that I was overreacting. I was just so angry at her and I still am. I don't think I can handle living with her for much longer. My roommate keeps telling me that I'm overreacting, but I don't think I am. We also haven't spoken to each other since. Before you decide, jerk or not a jerk, there is an update. After I made that post, I couldn't sleep that night. I slept with my door locked because I was afraid of my roommate. I also slept with my inhaler under my pillow that night. I thought about it and I realized I shouldn't be afraid of my own home. The next morning, I saw my roommate and I asked her if we could talk about her stealing my inhaler and food. Apparently, she's still mad at me and I told her to bug off and she left. I was going to report her, but I thought that maybe we could sort everything out first. I guess that was a mistake. This all happened yesterday and I really needed to get out of that apartment. The first thing I did was speak to my landlord. My landlord is not a very nice person. I explained to him what happened and I told him that I didn't feel safe in my apartment, but he didn't really care. He told me that I can't get out of the lease unless I get my roommate to take it over and I highly doubt that my roommate would do that. The thing is, our lease would be up by the end of next month. I still moved out because I didn't feel safe there. Unfortunately, I have to continue paying the rent, but I guess it's not that bad since it's only two months. I was pretty upset after I spoke to my landlord. I had a meeting with my professor right after to discuss this project that I'm working on for her class. I'm actually pretty close with this professor. I looked extremely stressed out and upset. My professor noticed and she asked me if I was okay. I then broke down crying in my professor's office. I was extremely embarrassed, but I couldn't control it. I was under so much stress with work, finals, and roommate drama. She asked me what was wrong and I told her what happened with my roommate. She was shocked and she called my roommate crazy. I told her that I was going to report what happened and she also thought that I should report it. My professor was really nice. She helped me fill out and submit an incident report on what happened. I then went to the police station to file a report. My friend that brought the asthma inhaler for me that night went with me. I was waiting there for two hours until I was finally able to speak with an officer. He took my statement and he asked me if I wanted to press charges. I thought about it for a bit and I told him that I didn't want to press charges. I know that what my roommate did by stealing my asthma inhaler was horrible, but I didn't want to press charges against her. He asked me if I would like an officer to speak to her and I told him that I would. They called my roommate down to the station and the officer spoke to her privately. I don't know what he said to her because 
because I wasn't allowed to be in the room. When she got out, she looked both angry and scared. The officer told me not to worry and that my roommate won't be bothering me anymore. I still didn't feel safe living with my roommate. I decided to move out. I called one of my really close friends. I told her what happened and I told her that I needed a place to stay. She lives in an apartment alone and she told me that I could stay with her for a while. She came over. Her and my other friend helped me pack. It didn't take us long because I didn't pack much stuff. I took my basic necessities, clothes, laptop, medication, etc. I left the rest of my stuff in the room. I locked my bedroom door so that my roommate can't get in. Now I'm currently staying in my friend's apartment. Her apartment is kind of small, but she made it feel like home. I'm sleeping on her couch and it's surprisingly comfy. At least I feel safe here. I don't plan on staying at my friend's for long. I have some money saved up and I've already started looking at apartments. The past few days have been long and extremely stressful. I was also an anxious mess the entire time. Now I'm just trying to get through the rest of my finals. So am I the jerk? Honestly, that is pretty horrifying. Imagine if she didn't have a friend at that moment or the asthma attack got way worse. I think people don't understand how serious something like this can be. To be in a true moment of panic, of stress, and not be able to have the thing that you need in order to breathe, that is terrifying. It's kind of like how some people just don't get that other people have food allergies that are really serious. You see people sometimes trying to trick or prank each other by messing with their food allergy and they don't understand that some food allergies are more serious than they could ever imagine. Luckily in this situation, the OP had good friends around her, a friend that had a backup asthma inhaler to use for the night and a friend that she could stay with with. It seems like the bad roommate still didn't get the message even when she was leaving the police station. So it's probably for the best that the OP just leaves because who knows what kind of retaliation that bad roommate is going to have at that point. All for what? Because she wouldn't give her free food constantly? So let me know how you would handle this. If you needed an inhaler and you found out that someone you knew stole it from you as a way to get back at you, how would you handle it? What would you do? What? could you do? Let me know down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you guys next time.